It's uh, Monday, November 20th. It is 3.10 p.m. This is the uh, port committee meeting. Uh, Mr. Davis, is there uh, anything you'd like to start us out on? Well, there are three issues that you asked to be added to general discussion and one issue for executive session. For the general session discussion item, the first item you had up there was uh, agricultural inspector. Um, as an update, there's been no further update since the last time we talked about it. We've requested one. There's one um, that is available but not funded, and uh, that is up to Customs and Border Protection as to the timing of when they do what they're going to do. Uh, I think for the record, I, mean, you know, I know your back is to the camera or whatever. We have Adam Johns here from uh, uh, OMLC, whatever, represented the meeting, whatever, so uh, maybe you want to give an opening statement for the camera, whatever you want to do. I'm okay, an executive. Okay. Uh, executive so, session, okay. So. Wait, can I add to the agricultural inspection? I just found yes, out. Um, <clears throat> Adam and I were up talking to, uh, on an upcoming project, we were talking about um, some issues with FTZ and bonding with CBP, and uh, they did happen to mention I, the two gentlemen said, oh, that happens later in the month or later on. We'll need an agricultural inspector to on board. Well, they've got a new regulation. Um, and CBP, when they board a ship, they handle all the agricultural things here because they don't have an inspection inspector. So as a an, another thing to push that along, they're saying they, they need one when they board a ship to have an agricultural inspector and what they do is they don't it's not so much the cargo as to how the ship is maintained trash um, what were some of the other things they mentioned uh, animals animals different Anymore. things there so what they were saying was it just as Wade said it's been funded but it hasn't been filled yet but they're using the port as another means of um, pushing that along um, there so we, we that's a little added incentive to uh, to make that happen here it's not just here but also they could they would need one at the port is, is, well I was gonna say is it is it is the goal here to see if the product has been compromised or anything no or um, it's just no no it's just <coughs> it's it's a really more of a regulatory thing whereas CBP concentrates on um, the vessel and it's uh, the crew and immigration stuff. Okay. They also, right now, they currently do those light inspections, like he said. We have a check sheet. We check those on behalf of agriculture. But with new regulations coming down, they're going to need uh, an inspector to go on board when they go on board. Uh, and it, they said Lakers or Salties, anything. It's good so, to know. So there's even more of a demand than what there was. That's what I was just trying to add to that. So nation nationwide? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Doug. Is this... Is this inspector, is this strictly through customs and immigration? So customs border. Yeah, it's customs part of border. Be, they represent the USDA. So they have here to, and at the port. They have to supply it. Um, that's what we're at here. We're asking that's what the, yes. all of this okay. is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> so you know, actually if we had one at the port and one at the bridge, that would be Better than anything else. Well, we may not have enough to enough business to support one there, but the idea would be this makes a better case for getting that manned right away, and then for the amount of vessels that we have, this would, that would help them do their job better. That that's kind of what they were saying. So it just happened that we had that discussion this morning with them. So I thought I'd add that since it was well, on the discussion. The reason I, I put this on in John's report, he mentions that a. Um, Local grain merchant um, bought 3,000 tons of grain into Canada in shipment, had to cross at Alex Bay, and it, because we don't have an agriculture inspector here, it cost the grain broker an additional $70,000 in fees. That is correct. That's the value of having one at a port of entry, which we do not. So, if I was a, a grain broker, I would think twice about coming here, right? Now, do you yes. know who that is and if they're willing to write a letter of support for us to send on to, I'm assuming, the um, C 
CDP. And I believe they already C have in this case. I'll double check that, but I believe they have already <coughs> uh, written this one, and that's what we used along with our elected officials to change the minds of Customs and Border Protection okay. and fund and position a person here in Arnottsburg. I'll verify that with John. Okay. <coughs> Okay. That kind of stumps me a little bit because I think about, you know, you think we know what's doing what we're doing and going on, and all of a sudden you start to realize here's another set of rules and regulations and things that are not, and we're not there, and we're not there, and we think we're there, but then we realize we're not there. It's a very good point of Steve bringing that up. But but it, it, the frustrating part is it's out of our hands. And until they put one in there, we can write all the letters. But we're farther know, along than, than we, we were a year ago. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's it's good. Been that's funded, and it's just that they haven't filled it. And just from what we talked, they couldn't really give us an answer, but they basically thought the beginning of the year. So they, that was where all the work we did with CBP and getting. Okay. So they did announce it was funded, <coughs> I don't know, earlier in the way earlier in the yes. year. And we thought, oh, no problem, someone will be there. But you know how the way government yeah, works. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the so frustrating part. Funding at least helps work a little bit farther down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, if we absolutely positively needed one tomorrow, there is another path, but it's an unacceptable one, and that's where the Bridge and Port Authority pays 100 percent of that individual salary up there. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So if we had somebody knock on our door tomorrow that says we want to bring in X, and the numbers justify, there would be a path, but that's not what I recommend. What's the Canadian system do? <coughs> we don't work at a whole lot of border crossings, but uh, most of the times it's all cleared before. Um, like they have a, like if you're loading a ship, they'll have uh, your equivalents here, but like a CGC, Canadian Grain Corporation, and another outfit that comes, they take samples every 500 tons or something, they go on board a vessel. But for trucked in, trucked out stuff across the border, I can't really speak to that because we don't have uh, and you're talking about trucked U.S. cargo to Canadian, or Canadian cargo across Canada. In this particular Canada. case, I believe so. Yeah. And it was 3,000 tons, and it cost them 70,000 more dollars? That's steep. Yeah. That's robbery. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Very, 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 very steep. Yeah. 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 Well, obviously, it sounds like we've already have a plan in place. Okay, that's good to know. And sometimes the I don't know don't know where they were, but sometimes the logistics can play into that. You know, they're not going to drive out, or I don't know where they were, where the origin was, but uh, there's sometimes factors. Yeah. One might uh, just think of what you just said, Wade, that we would be on the, if we had to have one tomorrow. But if a, a ship came in and we needed that inspector, and we paid. Whatever we paid for that would come out of our profit statement then, probably, right? If we had to pay for that position yes. for a day or well, two days. Or and that would be part of the problem is one uh, one off, two off doesn't justify it. So it's cost, cost prohibitive. Yeah. So that, the fact that it's been funded is uh, better than the money not being there for the yeah. position. Yeah. And for this, what we talked about, if if they needed them for later in the, say in December or something, they said they could bring an inspector from the bay for one yeah, day and yeah. cover that, and that wouldn't be a cost to us in this case. So it is an well, that thing that would, yeah. yeah, they for one day they said they'd cover it because they realized that it's been funded and they haven't, they haven't, um, filled. They haven't filled it yet. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't speak too much, but that person's sole responsibility wouldn't be just that, right? They could be a customs border guard as well as have wear two hats to do that and, mm -hmm. and smaller ports of entry, right? Yeah. So like, even a current border guard could be that person at the right mm -hmm. school. Yeah. yeah, once they were designated as an agricultural inspector, I would assume so. I think you'll probably see more of that. What's yeah. new? Well, I mean, to me, my, my thought process is here's the load, and I say it came from Canada. It must be sealed, right? I wouldn't think, no. No? So if it was in a container coming well, from Well, for their own in-house stuff, they want that sealed. They want to know if anyone's tampered with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, but uh, maybe, I don't. I, I imagine that would be standard operating. 
but I know. Well, that doesn't that. matter over there. Whatever happens, it's one thing. He can go over here and he checks it. Or whatever they do, it, right? Okay. You know, an interesting process. Something new. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next thing, anything else on that? The next thing you no. asked about is uh, truck weights. Uh, truck weights. All of our elected officials are aware of the truck weight issue. Uh, again, for those folks watching on camera, what this is, this is an international port uh, shipping to and from an international destination, which is Canada, hampered by a New York State New York State restriction. We'll be requesting relief from New York State DOT regulatory requirements. All of our state and federal elected officials are aware of it, and I did have a chance to talk on Friday with New York State DOT and brief them on the same issue. DLT, are they the the lead agency that either says yes or no to this request? No, this is a, you can bring them over by permit, but this is a, a regulation, so this is a legislative change, which means uh, it would need to be approved in Albany and then signed off on by the governor at the end of the day. So this is an exemption under the law that we'll be so, pursuing. So we have contacted all our... Yes, we have, and it's our number one uh, priority for our... Um, Strategic development people as well. So I was going to ask. Okay. An interesting component in my thought process, and I think of the road. We moved the road, and we found out that the the county owned the road, the ground underneath, and the state owned the the top part, whatever. Now I think about this situation here. We have the city involved. We have the county involved. We have the state involved. No county, just city and state only. That's not a county road any of the, any of the, none of the count, so the county is out of this. Correct. Okay, that's good. I think the history of the road is why. Remember, there was some talk the county had 68 at one time or something yeah. like that. That might be the only reason for that. Well, I'm just trying to think of, of, of the who's involved, the dynamics of I know how we're trying to accomplish this, and how would the federal government be involved in this? The grant, any grants? Well, no, there wouldn't be any grants associated with this. This is a regulatory change that needs to be made by the state of New York because it's interfering with international commerce. International port, international bridge, New York state regulation in between. So we're just we're just sitting back right now waiting for an answer from... No, we aren't sitting back. We've talked to all our no, I'm saying officials. We, we did that, but we can't do anything further until... There's nothing that we can do until there's a legislative change made. Okay. We do have a permitting process in place, but that's only effective if you know which specific truck and which specific trailer combination are coming over. Okay. Well, we've been after this for a long time. <laughs> you know, you would just think that... Uh, our representatives would uh, see what kind of things are running up against there and, and help us out. And hopefully they will and uh, get this done sooner than later. They seem to be very receptive to it in the conversations we've had with them. So. Mm -hmm. well, they come back in session in January, so we'll see um, how they move forward. And the third question, uh, Mr. Burns, I think you had was uh, something with regard to salt movement. Yeah, um, I don't know if it was in John's report or not, but I, I'm uh, I'm only aware of one movement, uh, one ship in this year. Is, is, is that true, Adam? Uh, there was two earlier. Yeah. There's been two in. Yeah. April. Both in April. Yeah, within two weeks of each other. Anything else scheduled for the rest of this year? The third one in December, yeah. Where does that put us as far as what we anticipated for tonnage on, on salt? Do you know? Um, it would be a little short on that, you know, kind of 100,000 ton mark in by vessel we were looking for, but there was some, uh, there was some carryover. Um, you know, some of we're being told there's a bit of a shortage somewhat of, of uh, possible salt. Yeah, normally we would get, they, they bring in extra to cover their their 120% their commitment. And I think because of the salt shortage, um, or being able to put that out, I think they're just, they're just anticipating that um, we're just going to bring in what we we fill for orders. So if it's a normal winter, I would imagine we won't have anything 
there um, based on this last ship. Where do we stand? I know a couple of years ago we were we were not the port of entry or the uh, port for the state salt. Remember we had the because of how the yeah. state bid the because contract. Because how they bid the That's contract. Still, is that yeah. still in effect? Yes, it yes. is. So that ties locally, in like all the New York State, um, the local New York State stuff all goes through ARS. We're we're basically Franklin County. We're out beyond that, and so even like the. You see the state DOT barn in Houston, mm -hmm. that was an easy one. Yep. They'd order 1,200 tons and all we'd have is one truck and 1,200 tons would be done in a day. Yep. Now it comes from the depot or the IRS place in Norwood and we, and they roll it over. So I, I, I may be wrong on that, but they rolled it over last year and I believe they did this year. So when they open it up, that gives Morton a chance to get back in it. Okay. And Morton's the one that's really yep. hasn't been very busy. As compared to uh, SIFTO or Compass. Okay. Yeah. When is that contract done? Do you know? Uh, March of March of eighteen, right? For oh, which our contract or the state one? State. Usually, they the thing with New York State, they wait a lot longer, and I, I want to say they usually round that up in August. Yeah, New York State typically waits until uh, the last. Uh, state of the season, basically. And, and wrapping isn't that why we had the problem? It, 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 exactly. Ways. And what happens yeah. is, yeah. on a really, like, say, salt is used up everywhere, uh -huh. um, they end up getting contracts done in Indiana, Minnesota, and all, and like in June, and, and then they realize we're not going to take any more on because we can't fill them. So they might throw a high number at New York with the hope of, but since we're behind that, um, it hurts us. And, and that's the state process and you know the way they go with that but if we I was always told if we if New York State bid it earlier um, it, it probably be more competitive for them instead of losing out um, with people that just say we've got our fill for the year we're not even bidding on that and that's through a DLT too um, OGS. OGS OGS yes yeah their strategy um, um, again in inventory years where there's a lot of inventory their strategy guarantees them a low price, but they're almost by the way they're doing it and how they wait, they almost guarantee a locked-in high price. So it's just by the method of how they do it. So it doesn't help us any. Correct. Okay. So we'll have uh, <clears throat> we'll be roughly around hundred thousand tons. He said, Adam, and that's about what we anticipated for this year. Uh, we're going to be around seventy-five. Inbound, but outbound because there's there were some on thirty plus thirty ish thirty thousand short tons on the dock uh, out the door. Uh, revenues you'll probably see higher than the inbound. And we can verify that against what the budget is. Something. Yeah, we can. We can. Real, I can really give you the numbers. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, Ohio looks kind of small down there. Yeah. Well, I, don't know, I lost track of time. Three years ago, was it? And we had so much salt, and Toronto came here in New York City all over the Northeast. Uh, they were looking for whatever they could find. I, I get the video of the trucks lined up here from, yep. you know, so. Toronto, Buffalo, and New York City all in the same week. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were <laughs> Five, six years and so, were, which are all yeah. overloaded trucks. Well, so everybody's in the same situation. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the governor said it was an emergency situation, so <laughs> trucks are going out of here. Exactly for the way to suspend were the rules when they want to. That's just going to so say. So you can't say it's never what? been. That's no. it. That's right. That's enough. I've got to suspend the Yeah, I know. We're going to shoot ourselves in the foot here, right? Nice knowing you, Steve. Lewis. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> actually ruined the bridge for you. So. All right, so as far as the uh, salt movement is concerned, we'll have the three in this year and. What are we looking at for next year? Is it too early? I would prefer that we discuss that off camera due okay. to the nature of the public record. Sure. I'll save that question. Well, you know, it's interesting you, you asked it in a way because what I've noticed, and it's kind of like who's who's reading the farmer's almanac? <laughs> and, 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 and so some years that I've been here, the pile is huge, and it's like, okay, they must have some idea what kind of winter it's going to be. And so... If the pile's got 75,000 tons in there or whatever, somebody's saying, well, it's going to be, that's the type of winter they're predicting. And, and it's like, that's, you just go with it. You go with it. 
And obviously, the, three or four years ago, those other people didn't read the almanac or whatever because they were all short. They were all short. Or it's the type of winter you get. Right. I mean, just look, look what happened in the last two days here. That's greasy stuff on the road. You know, and it's like, I don't know what kind of salt you use to, you know, the temperature it is, but nasty. Nasty. My problem is there's a demand for more salt. We can't get it. We're pretty much yeah, well, stuck in at, at 100,000 tons total. The first, That's in 08, when I took over the port, um, we didn't have a real demand until the, like the 18th of January. It was our first snow. We were out of salt by the 1st of March. Yep. And then everyone's asking, we're like, there's nothing to do. We we can't, we weren't railing it in or anything. So rail, that's the one thing. Is rail that, that's yeah. possible then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Mr. Penny Chairman, the only other uh, only other item was an executive session was needed to discuss matters leading to the appointment of a corporation. Okay, is there a motion? I'll move it. Second? I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. We have executive session. Is uh, 525. We're just coming out of the executive session. Uh, Mr. Davis, is there any other business? Uh, there's no business uh, for the port committee this afternoon, Mr. Chairman. No action to be taken on anything? Uh, correct. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I, I would just make one comment in regards to the session that we had. I think it was very informative. I appreciate uh, Adam for taking the extra time and, and uh, bring us up to speed the things we need to do and how we're going to go about it and, and you know, the vision for moving ourselves forward. I do make a recommendation to, uh, that we should put another meeting in, in a reasonable length of time so we can keep pace with our thoughts and our process and keep them fresh in mind. So, and I appreciate your hard work, Sam, behind the scenes. So. Thank you. And Adam, thank you for, for coming and explaining all the little details to us that we certainly need. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>